after writing two transformational books myself and supporting many other beings to do the same, I've become enthralled by the deep and mysterious magic that's activated when we choose to say yes to ourselves and commit to the book writing journey. Of course, we want to inspire change and new perspectives in our readers, but the transformation that happens as an author, both throughout the writing process and by actually releasing your book into the world is surprisingly potent. I know I've been blindsided in the most disruptive and delicious ways by some of the changes my books have brought into my life. Writing a book is like casting a spell. Although we can never be completely sure what's going to be unleashed during the process, we choose to do it anyway. This Unbound One is a heroic journey. Each book has the potential to be a magical portal, a doorway to a new world, both for you and your reader. Each book has a very specific medicine that it's here to share with us. And each book gives us the opportunity to alchemize the magnificent imperfection of our experience into gold. The truth is that anyone can write a book. We could all get a few thousand words down and put them together. But what fascinates me is what happens when we allow the book writing process to go deeper. When we say, fuck it, get naked and dive way down beneath the surface letting go of the shoulds and any need to be acceptable, sensible or approved of. What fascinates me is what happens when we make ourselves fully available to being transformed by the very act of writing a book. This is Unbound Writing and this is the process we'll be exploring together here in the Unbound Writers Club. I'm Nicola Humber, author and founder of The Unbound Press, and I help magical beings to write the transformational book they're really here to write at this time. I'm your guide here in The Unbound Writers Club, and the aim of this podcast is to help you to feel supported, encouraged, activated as you embark on your book writing journey. Whether you're a first-time author or have many books out in the world, my hope is that you will find something here to inspire you. Let's dive in. Hello, you magical soul, and welcome to another episode of the Unbound Writers Club. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Caroline Britton, author of Coming Home to You, which is one of our recent releases here at the Unbound Press. Caroline is a global speaker. She's a teacher, coach, mentor, healer, and intuitive guide, and an expert in helping people to connect back to their soul. She delivers her powerful teachings through a combination of online courses, private coaching, and speaking events and works with a variety of clients from sports professionals, CEOs, entrepreneurs, healers, working professionals, and those in the public eye. So it's been a real treat to hold space for Caroline as she has been writing, coming home to you, and through the publishing process as well. And we get to dive into all of that today. The publishing process for this book was actually quite challenging and quite stressful (laughs) for all of us. Like things came up which don't normally come up and we dive into all of that today. So Caroline talks about her writing process, but also what it was like for her to be going through the publishing process and have these issues come up. You know, it can happen. I always say that, I think I mentioned it in this conversation, that the publishing process can be just as transformational as the actual writing process of the book. And it's always interesting kind of what bubbles up when we're going through that process. You know, and one of the things that I believe sets us apart at the Unbound Press is like we're really here to hold space for our authors, even or especially when things are challenging. And with these transformational books, like they hold a really powerful energy. So often things can bubble up around them. They can create a bit of disruption. And Caroline and I talk about that as well during this conversation. So I'm really excited to introduce you to Caroline. If you haven't connected with her before, she is just an incredible woman. And like I said, I'm just delighted that we've got to work with her at the Unbound Press and really excited to see what this book goes on to do. But um, yeah, let me introduce you to her. 
So Caroline, welcome to the Unbound Writers Club. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Oh. So happy to be here. Oh, me too. Me too. And I'm really excited for this conversation and to see what wants to come through. But I do always start with the same question, which is, what does it mean to you to be an unbound writer? Oh, gosh, I think for me, I have such a belief that the words for the book were coming through Mm -hmm. me. And because I have such a belief in the words coming through me, it felt really important that they were allowed to do so with absolute freedom. Mm -hmm. So that's what it feels like for me to be a unbound author is that whatever message wanted to move through me was free to do so in whatever way that she wanted to. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that so much. So when did you first start getting the nudge to write a book is it something that's been there for a long time or did it come more recently because I whether it had always consciously been there I don't know but I remember being in my early 20s and being in a coffee shop and had a job that I really didn't like was really stressful and mean boss at the time I remember standing in this queue and seeing like all these people sort of like working or writing and I thought then I remember having this fleeting thought of like, one day I'm going to write a book, like, and I'm going to have freedom, I'm going to write a book. And then I sort of forgot about that. And then when I was at the early stages of having started my business, I just started getting a little bit of a niggle, but didn't do a huge amount about it. And then really, it was last year, mm. that it really felt like it was trying to come through. But I was very fixated on like, what's the name going to be? And it's like, mm. and then eventually, I think about halfway through last year, it was like, it doesn't matter what the name is. It's just like, let's get some words on paper. So I think it's always been there. And I can feel like more books coming through to be birthed. Mm. But I think that the real impetus and energy behind it happened last year. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for sharing that about the title, because I think so many of us can get hung up on that. It's like, well, if I haven't got the title, then, you know, I have to wait until that's clear. And it's like, no, like often the title won't, or you might have something, but actually the title changes yeah, anyway. I did actually, if you remember, I did change yeah. it. And it was only about halfway through writing the book that that coming home to you sort of landed with me. Yeah, absolutely. So it feels to me like you're a really natural writer Caroline like I'm on your email list I love receiving your emails like obviously the book is just stunning Uh, has it always come easily to you I've always loved writing so I've always been somebody I did like English and art and history a level I did a history degree so I've always picked like modalities where you write a lot and I remember as a child I used to write loads and loads write loads of stories write in my journal write in my diary so writing has always been a big part of how I connect and really interestingly I'm an avid journaler as well so Mm -hmm. I really find there's like transformation and magic through the pen that something happens that when I take the energy and put it into words it holds a certain frequency and can transmute frequencies from from say something denser to something much more light so I use it not just in my book but I've used it journaling all the time amazing I'm curious actually do you ever like you're journaling something for you personally and then you end up sharing it like in an email or did that any of that make its way into the book at all I think definitely I think that it's all like the stream of consciousness in many ways that was moving through me and actually a lot of what's in the book has Um, got foundations with emails or posts that I might have written and I did end up changing quite a lot of it as I went through because I wanted to have it as a flow but it's almost like I feel I write something it's like an imprint at that point in time and it holds like its own little energetic portal Mm. so whenever people read it whether it's on Instagram or pick up my book or read my email it's like it holds the energy that's supposed to be activated within them at that time does that Mm. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I really see it like that. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Because I know I've had this personally sometimes. I thought, oh, if somebody's not connecting with it, like in that moment when I'm sharing with it or like near that time, then does the energy of it gets lost? And it's like, no, yeah, <laughs> it holds it. Holds it, it. it definitely holds it. I'm sure of that. Absolutely. So tell us about the actual process of writing. Like you said, it feels like it came through you and I really resonate with that, I'm sure. 
many of our, the people listening will as well. Sometimes it feels like something is just coming through and we have to trust that. And it can be challenging to trust that at times. But what was the process like for you, Caroline? So I think that it's so funny, I've been on such a journey with it to almost remember the beginning is mm-hmm. so interesting. But I think the way that it felt to me at the beginning was quite chaotic. Like it was just like all of these thoughts coming through. And what I initially did is, I recognized that for me, it felt very much that I was being called to talk about disconnection and connecting back to soul. Like they were the two bits for me. So what I reflected on was almost how I'd approach a program. Well, okay, A is disconnection and B is the point where I want people to connect back to themselves. At a high level, what do I really feel like those three steps are? Mm-hmm. And that's when I started feeling into it. And I was like, well, the first bit is really reflecting on why you're disconnected and what is happening in your life as a result of it. And the next bit was like, and then it's the transformation. Like, what can you actually do to transform from disconnected to connected? And then it felt like the third piece was like, and how do we get momentum here? And then once I had those almost like the pillars, it's there that I started taking things that I'd written before and just slotting them in Mm -hmm. so then I had like this jumble as we know and I took that jumble and basically tried to give it some sort of coherence and then I passed it to you and the team Mm -hmm. and just said right here's like a place where we start and then what was brilliant is you really guided me on you know I'd love to hear more about your story I'd love to hear more about um the energy behind this how you affected so much change in your own life and then I started weaving that into each of the sections and I almost sort of rewrote what I have now with that energy between it Mm -hmm. and that's how it kind of started for me yeah and like that whole process it just felt so magical the way you did manage to weave everything together like and how the energy of the book shifted like through the process really really powerful time came alive I felt like it was like all these seeds that were scattered in it through old posts and then I went like watering them and all these like flowers kind of came up in the pages it kind of came alive and I think Because the book has 35 illustrations as well. It's so alive visually. It's alive in the words. It's alive in the spaces between the um, Mm. sentences. It's it's very unusual. It's funny for me. I read it back. And I'm like, I can't quite believe I've written that. And it's really interesting how they've given information. Um, So, you know, I read it and feel activated by it, which is amazing. Yeah. And when you say there, like, they've given this information... Who are you talking about? <laughs> well, I'm talking about like infinite source. I'm talking yeah. about spirit. I'm talking about all the squad, the light beings, all the universal energy that wants the book out there. Yeah, sort of realms and forces greater than I am that are there wanting this message to be out there. Mm, really feeling that, really feeling that. As you were speaking, then, Caroline, about the book and you going back to it and think, feeling like, wow, like you getting activated by it. Like I really experienced that. Obviously, I'd read it like initially when you sent the first draft over and then like the, the final manuscript. I was reading it on the screen and without the illustrations as well. So and, you know, found that a really powerful experience. I was like doing some of the exercises, which <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have that one. And when I received the actual paperback copy, it was a completely different experience connecting with it then like seeing it with the illustrations with you know those spaces in between and wow like it literally like I often talk about books as portals but it really feels like this deeply magical portal it does it really is it's very clever how they've given it and there isn't a, even a coherence with the way that some of the sentences are structured. You know, sometimes two will be budged up together and then there'll be a big gap. And then it's just really interesting. But when I read it, I'm like, oh, I can kind of feel that that's important, that that sentence is budged up there. And then there's a space. It's it's really the thing about when we write mm-hmm. or we read a book, it's beyond the cerebral. It's like we don't know why it has an impact on us, but it does. And I feel that's because it holds an energy, it holds a coding that is lying in the words, the spaces, the images, whatever it might be, that's literally been waiting to activate something that's dormant within you. 
So it's like those words have a power that's unlocking something within you as the reader that was always supposed to be unlocked at that time. That's mm. how I view it. Yes, just yes to all of that and completely <laughs> on the same page there, where, you know, which is interesting as we're talking about books. Like writing in this way, it demands that we trust. You know, we have to trust what's coming through and the way it's coming through and, and you know, the process, like the order of it and the way it's unfolding. I mean, I was going to say I sense from you, but I know from you, like you seem to operate from this place of trust, like in everything you do, like certainly in the way you like run and grow your business. So it's no surprise that it's been the case with the book, but have there been times during the process, like the writing process where it's like, oh, like, I'm not sure, like times of doubt? Yeah, I mean, I have, I have a lot of fear and doubt that comes up. I just always manage to top the balance from <laughs> fear to faith. And that's not always easy. You know, we, I guess we'll talk a little bit about some of the things we experienced as we were distributing the book. Mm. And I, there was this voice that, you know, was saying and can say in the business, oh, what if this is going to go wrong? What if this is going to work? What if this is a step too far? Like all this kind of dialogue mm-hmm. that runs through. And I really come back to like, I have trust and I have faith. And it doesn't mean I'm not having a human experience of like stress and, and panic, but I'm always able to to go beyond that and just say, right, there's got to be a bigger reason for this because I really trust in my great greater purpose here on the planet. The interesting thing about when I was actually writing the book It was less about trust of the words coming through. What I found really easy about the book writing process is how easily the word and the information came. It's not like I sat there with writer's block. The words (laughs) just moved through me. That was the bit that I found ease with, which I didn't think I would. The bit that I found difficulty with was how my human and my ego would step in and as I was writing I was literally hearing this voice of could you be judged for that could you be criticized for that could people say that's wrong could people say that's irresponsible could people give you a hard time and what I had to continually keep doing is making sure that I was writing what wanted to move through me not what was playing it safe and I thought people wanted to hear Mm. and even when I was checking the final copy before sending it over for the first three sections, I was reading it thinking, could I be judged on that? Could people think that's weird? Is that too much oversharing? And I caught myself probably 45 minutes in and said, no, 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 no. Go back, read it again. Not with that energy. Is this book, is this section of high service? Is this of high service? Are you being true to what needs to be said? And I went through it that way. And that was the real shift for me. So that was the bit that I found most difficult was my human. Because the thing is, I'm sure you have a lot of writers say this. I, it feels it feels very vulnerable, mm. exposing, sharing a part of you and your story. And I feel like there's certainly a nervousness for people to read it and people that I know and love to read it Mm. you know will they see me differently will they judge me will they like it is it too much it's 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 being able to go beyond all of those insecurities that can come up and trust that there's a greater purpose to it and that you can trust yourself to write what needs to be written Mm. oh I love that I love that question is this of hive service like that's such a powerful question to come back to so thank you for sharing that and Again, as you were speaking, I was just really feeling how like a book is something different, isn't it? We can share something in an email or a social media post and that can feel vulnerable, like absolutely. But they can feel quite transient because it's like, OK, someone people are going to connect with them. But then, you know, we're on to the next thing. Whereas with a book, especially with like the paperback copy, like something solid, you know, it can just feel like Whew, that is really out there now. So absolutely yeah it does and it's like a moment in time it's a physical product it's something people have got but in a way that's what gives it it's magic I think about the book falling off a shelf for somebody in Mm. 10 or 20 years I think about a friend handing a copy to somebody or ordering a copy to somebody I feel like it landing on the you know I've already had messages saying these these things have happened and your book landed on my doorstep and it's like giving me this it's like it's this piece of energy and magic that is physically getting itself in front of people and that is scary but also really exciting when you think of the enormitude of how it can help 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about the magic and maybe some of the mischief that the book <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of the actual you know publication and distribution process because we had issues with that like the launch date was planned for June the 14th and everything was going fine and then these issues started to bubble up and you know to be honest like issues that we'd never experienced before uh with any other book at the Unbound Press and it yeah. felt like one thing after another so like I personally I was away on retreat when a lot of this was coming up I found it like stressful it must have been incredibly stressful for you so thank you so much for kind of bearing with us as things um you know move through and actually um we did manage to release it a couple of days later but yeah how was that you know we were talking there about some of the kind of doubts and fears that can come up with the writing but what was that like for you when these issues were bubbling up around the distribution yeah I mean it was interesting I think at first I thought oh it'll get resolved really quickly like within half an hour and then when like more and more complexities were coming up and then I was trying to speak to people and uh, and it was getting blocked and all of these mm. very strange things that didn't make any sense. And yeah. it wasn't just on one platform, it was on another, but they had different yeah. issues and different mm. things and things that didn't make sense. And and even the hours where you could speak to somebody was so bizarre and there'd be calls. And, it, and there was part of me that was like, oh, maybe this is just everything is going wrong. And... I'm going to fail and everything's going to go wrong in my business and blah, 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 and all the other things. Because this is in a context of other significant challenges that I've had Mm -hmm. in other areas of business. And then there was just this like feeling of how are you going to lead yourself through it? And are you going to lead with grace? And Mm -hmm. if somebody was to ask Nicola and Em, what's Caroline like in the face of adversity? Could you say she really is the real deal like Mm -hmm. she holds herself with love and grace even though there's fear and and stress there and that was important to me the other thing was is this an opportunity for me to deepen even more trust and then what was really interesting is on the final day before it was released where we were really thinking is this going to happen? And Amazon had almost given us this time frame of five days. And I thought, what if I can't publish my book on Amazon? And all these people had been on pre-sale and I spoke to somebody in their call center who just didn't get it and tried, but wasn't being very helpful. I put the phone down and I went to have a massive cry. And I then received like a message from somebody about, <laughs> really bizarrely, about how I'd, I was sort of changing their life and like she'd been watching me for a while. And I thought... I've got to really trust that I wouldn't have got this far. And then really interestingly, I picked up another book by somebody called Jamie Kern Lima called Believe It that you might have seen. And I opened the page and it said, I didn't come this far to get, to only get this far. And I thought, yeah, I'm getting a lot of signs here that this is just the beginning of the next level for me. So it did feel stressful and I was crying, but also I'm really proud of how I led myself through it. And also it just didn't seem, I kept saying to my husband, it cannot be a coincidence. It's happened on this platform. It's happened on this platform. Like Nicola happens to be away. It doesn't, it can't be. Like it just can't be. There's too many things that have aligned for it not to go out. So we still don't know and we will do, I'm sure one day about why it had to go out then. Mm. and why things are happening the way they are and it'll probably be an amazing story that I tell on April one day let's see yeah (laughs) I I kept thinking that all the way through this is going to be a great story at some point it does not feel like it right now like oh like thank you so much like I'm so grateful to you Caroline like I spoke to Em earlier because we hadn't well, we hadn't been on Zoom together since I'd got back from the retreat and she was just saying she's so grateful to you for the way you were through the whole process because I know it must have been stressful. On Monday, I was sat in the service station, like trying to get onto Amazon and, you know, I was in that place. of well, I felt so supported and I think that was another thing is the reminder that we get to be really supportive when these things are happening. Yeah. And, you know, we've just got to trust it and it's out there now. 
And the amazing thing is, it's like even when I ordered my copy that you get to look at before it goes on pre-sale, it took ages. I ordered mm-hmm. 20 books, like, and it's just they're here already. It's Monday yeah. morning. I ordered them, I think, on Friday. It's still Thursday, not whenever it was. It's like, yeah, that, maybe it was Thursday. I think it might be Friday, but you know, everything has like got this speed, it's like ready to to go. When it cleared, it just cleared, like yeah. didn't it? It was just like, whoo, no, everything's yeah, okay now. Right. It just cleared on both. Really bizarre. Very really bizarre. bizarre. Really bizarre. And I just feel it's really important to share around this and for us to have the conversation because you know, it is the nature of the publishing. I believe like the, like, obviously writing a book is transformational, but the publishing pros, like the kind of nuts and bolts of it, like going through this and releasing it into the world is just as transformational. And like, I feel we all experience that transformation. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. also the book, I, as I was driving back from retreat and I didn't know at the time, like what, you know, whether things had been resolved. I just thought like this, but like you said, it's so interesting that it happened with both platforms. And there's something here, like this book is here to disrupt the old ways. And like the old ways almost can't, like these platforms can't take it in a way. So I really see it as a power, you know, sign of the power of the book. Yeah, yeah, me too. Absolutely. Mm. How are you feeling now that it is making its way into the world? Like I've been seeing all of the stories on social media about people receiving their copies. Caroline, yeah. how how do you feel? Yeah, Joe, I don't think it's fully sunk in. I think, yeah, I don't think it's fully sunk in for me. I feel like a great sense of achievement, a great sense of pride. I feel, interestingly, the apprehension has gone mm. and it's replaced by a kind of wonder and a anticipation about what's next I think I was saying this to you on the call like this is what it feels like is I don't really know what goes beyond this and this again this is like another deepening of trust is what goes and comes next so at the moment I feel very much like I'm just it feels like this I've done it it's a high act of service it's out there and my job is to surrender and let the book and the business and life and God, universe, source, take me where I'm supposed to go in the next bit. So it's a really interesting time for somebody who likes to, you know, what can I do? Come on, universe. Like, what would you have me do? That I feel they're really saying, just like, okay, just let, let it let it go, let it be. And you just surrender to it at the moment. So that's what I'm leaning into. Wow, surrender. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I'm sure we will have another conversation at some point, like once the book has been yeah. out there for a period of we'll months. Stories to tell. And we will. Months. September, October. Yeah, they're saying after, what are they saying? End of September, early October, we have another conversation about what's come. Because I think yeah. that's really powerful is, yeah, what what did it do? What magic did it weave? And we could, we could um, certainly have a conversation about that I think that would be amazing I would love to I would love to I'm going to put that in the diary to get in touch and we will arrange a time um Caroline for those listening who want to find out more about you and the amazing work you're doing in the world what's the best way for them to do that yeah so you could go to my Instagram which is at Caroline Britain coaching and um, or my website which is www.caroline-britain.com and I do loads of like free programs free masterclasses so there's lots of things to get to know me on an even deeper level and hear a little bit about the work that I do um, and then obviously to buy the book and yeah. see what magic they experience but I really trust that people will feel the call to it or it'll make their what make its powerful way to them when the time is right. And and I want to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you for the love and support. There are so many people who are saying, I cannot believe that you wrote a book with such ease and so quickly. And a lot of that is down to the support I have from you and your team. So thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, that means so much. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And like like I've been said, I'm so grateful to you, Caroline. I'm grateful for the first time we connected when you reached out about the book and everything that's unfolded, even the challenges. You know, I'm grateful that we got to go on this journey and we continue to go on this journey together. Yeah. Just getting started, so thank you. Oh, thank you as well. Thanks, Caroline.